Um, I think there's some fatigue, AIDS fatigue. People are, are tired of having to be so careful. Um, I think people get, I think a couple things. One, they're not informed. It's amazing to me, 26 years after this epidemic was, was discovered here, how many people still don't know? They don't have the correct information about HIV, how it's transmitted, how you get it, how do you protect yourself against it. it it's amazing. I talked to um, a high school student who lives next door to me a couple years ago, and, and I, was, I was saying, so you, you talk about HIV in school, right? And she said, you know, I think they may have spent five minutes on it in a health class. And I'm like, five minutes? on the greatest humanitarian crisis in the world, and we expect our students and teenagers to know if parents aren't doing a good job talking about it and the schools aren't doing a good job talking about it, there's something wrong there. So we've got to do a better job um, educating and informing people. And then I think, secondly, um, there is a reluctance in our culture to put any limitations on ourselves or uh, any limitations on our sexuality. There's, there is an increasingly... Um, um, I would say attitude in uh, just even watching TV in which people are encouraged to explore sexuality. And if you do that without the confines of, of faithful relationships, without the confines of commitments to each other, then STDs and HIV are going to rise. There's, there's just no two ways about it. I don't know if you, you probably know this, but um, if there are about a million people in the United States who are HIV positive, there are about 65 million people with STDs. That's a lot of sexually transmitted diseases. And um, people are going to need to do some behavior change. And, and we don't like that. We don't like anybody telling us that we need to put any kind of limitations. But it is for our own health. It's for the health of, of the people that we're with, for our children. To me, it just makes sense. Mm -hmm.